Hello, and welcome to another video on Sustainability Consulting with Jack. Today is the second in a five-part series on how to calculate your own carbon footprint. So if you missed the first one on setting organizational boundaries and control approaches, I'd recommend scooching back a bit and watching that through. For those of you that have, thanks for coming this far. Today, we're going to start building out and thinking about the carbon emitting activities that could be associated with your organizational boundary. At this point, I find it's really useful to try and develop a strong understanding of the business or carbon footprint you're examining. What are their main activities? How many offices do they have? Are they an international company? Are they in fashion, manufacturing, retail or chemicals? What are their operating hours? And find out these answers by talking to experts, talking to company representatives or having a quick search online. Often at this stage, established carbon consultants will use some form of questionnaire or standard interview process to make sure that nothing is missed or overlooked. Once you've established a comprehensive understanding of the company and their operations, you can begin classifying these emissions into different carbon scopes. Under the WRIGHG protocol, the gold standard for carbon reporting, we have three scopes, scope one, scope two, and scope three. Scope one is direct GHG emissions occurring from sources that are owned or controlled by the company. Scope two is GHG emissions from the generation of purchased electricity consumed by the company. And scope three is a category that allows for the treatment of all other indirect emissions. These are split into 15 different upstream and downstream categories. For detailed information on each of these scopes and categories and the underlying activities, please search the descriptions you can see on the screen for the relevant scope and category. Now at this stage, I think it's really important to stress the importance of perspective when it comes to categorizing your emitting activities into scopes. We'll go into this in a bit more detail in a later video to help tease out some of the intricacies. But to help illustrate the point, I'll use an example from commercial real estate. As a tenant with operational control over my building, the electricity and gas that I use will be classified as scope one and scope two carbon emissions. However, that is because we're considering the emissions from my perspective as a tenant. However, if we consider these emissions from the perspective of my landlord, these emissions would be considered as a scope three activity under scope three, category 13, downstream leased assets demonstrating that it's critical you consider the perspective you're using to develop your carbon footprint, as well as staying aware that an emission source will not always be recorded under the same category. And that's it for now. To find out how you can use your organizational boundary and identified carbon emitting activities to create a carbon footprint, stay tuned and like and subscribe for the next video. If you've got any questions, suggestions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below.